there are two points of brachial plexus that are vulnerable to damage or that normally get injured. These are this part. This is a part of the upper trunk of the brachial plexus. This is known as the herbs point. So when this gets injured, it results in herbs palsy. And then there is another part of the brachial plexus that is vulnerable. The lower trunk of the brachial plexus, when this gets damaged, it results in Klumke's paralysis. Now let's go in depth of these two diseases. The most important paralysis in clinical point of view of the brachial plexus is the herbs palsy. The site of damage in herbs palsy is the upper trunk. It is known as the herbs point. The roots that are involved, the upper trunk, since it's made up of the C5 and C6 spinal nerves, hence the roots are involved are C5 and partly C6. How does this damage occur? Well, whenever there is undue separation or hyperextension of your neck that results in head and shoulder to be separated from one another, that's when the upper trunk of brachial plexus is damaged. So this usually occurs during birth of the baby and it occurs when a person falls in a motorcycle accident on his shoulder. The muscles paralyzed are BD, CIS. This abbreviation stands for the most important muscles involved are the BQ. These are the biceps, the bi brachialis, the brachioradialis. The D stands for deltoid. And partly involved are CIS muscles. The cis muscles are supraspinatus, infraspinatus, and the supinator. So what are the functions of each of these muscles? Biceps causes flexion of the forearm, brachialis, brachioradialis basically cause supination of the forearm. The deltoid, the supra, and infraspinatus are responsible for the abduction. And this too is causing supination. So overall, when these are damaged, what happens? What is the deformity? Obviously, the arm, what will happen to the arm? It will be adducted as the abductors of the arm are paralyzed. So it will be adducted. So arms will hang by the side and adducted, medially rotated. And the forearm, since biceps is responsible for its flexion and it is paralyzed, it will lie extended and since all supinators are not working, it will be pronated. And this characteristic appearance of the person will be known as the policeman's or waiter's tip. This is the classic deformity in herbs paralysis. And finally, what will be the disability? Obviously, these movements will not be performed. So the person won't be able to abduct, flex forearm, pronate forearm, or laterally rotate his arm and biceps and supinator jerk will be lost and cutaneous sensation over the deltoid will be lost. So this is a brief overview of the herbs palsy, which is a very important question for exam point of view. Moving on, let's talk about the Klumke's paralysis. So Klumke's paralysis is when there is damage to the lower trunk of the brachial plexus and the cause of this damage is when there is undue abduction. So there is excessive abduction of your shoulder, which results in the head and shoulder to come very close to each other, resulting in lower trunk damage. So this happens when, when a person is falling from a height and holds on to a bar all of a sudden. It can also happen in birth and fall from a height. So the muscles involved in this case since it's lower trunk, so the ulnar nerve is being formed, very important nerve. When ulnar nerve is damaged, the intrinsic muscles of the hands undergo paralysis. The flexors of the fingers undergo paralysis, long flexors of the fingers undergo paralysis. This results in the deformity called the claw hand, super important. Claw hand, whenever there is ulnar nerve damage, it is going to result in claw hand. So in Klumke's, there is lower trunk damage, which was forming the medial cord, if you remember, resulting in a claw hand. The deformity is basically, there is hyperextension at the metacarpophalangeal joints, and there is flexion of the interphalangeal joints. So this was brief uh, clinicals of the 
brachial plexus. Thank you so much for watching.